Hi, we are talking about echinoderms today. So what I need you to do first is, um, or after, is I need you to watch this video, The Shape of Life, The Ultimate Animal, is echinoderms. What is going on with my hair? Oh, wait, should that go that way? No one knows. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's fine. Um, watch that because it talks about echinoderms and there's great animations and pictures. So you might be like, what is an echinoderm? Because A, that's the weirdest word I've ever seen. It doesn't even look like that. Echinoderms is what it looks like. Uh, they are spiny skinned. They have an internal skeleton. It's called an endoskeleton. Because endo means inside. They have a water vascular system. They have two feet and they have radial symmetry. So that's the definition of echinoderms. And all of these are examples of echinoderms. So if you remember when we talked about protostomes versus deuterostomes, you can go back and watch that video. If you forget, um, echinoderms and chordates are the only examples of deuterostomes. And if you remember deuterostomes, that's where the blastopore turns into an anus. So you have this um, egg and you have sperm. Okay, here's the egg, here's the sperm. Fertilize each other, they make a zygote, okay? A zygote divides a bunch of times and makes a hollow ball of cells. I don't know if you remember that. It's a ball of cells, hollow ball of cells. And it pushes up like this. So if this is my hollow ball of cells, it pushes up like this. And then the blastopore is that opening. If it develops into a mouth, it's a protostome. If it develops into an anus, it's a deuterostome. So in echinoderms, it develops into an anus. So echinoderms are the first animal we talk about that are deuterostomes. Okay. So, so are chordates, which are vertebrates. So the water vascular system, that is very important. The water vascular system, that is their functioning of almost everything. It's filled with fluid, get it, water. Um, it carries out many essential body functions. So respiration occurs there, so they get oxygen from the water with the water, water vascular system. They get, they circulate the oxygen then through the all of the arms with the water vascular system. They circulate the nutrients through the arms with the water vascular system. They use um, two feet, a part of the water vascular system. They use it for movement. Their two feet are um, basically, have you ever seen an eyedropper? You know, where you squeeze the top of the little black part of the eyedropper and you can suck up water and then, or like a food coloring thing and then you drop it in. Have you ever seen anything like that? Well, that's how two feet work. You have the top part of the two feet sucks up water, and then the bottom part that would let the eyedropper, that would let the water out, that would um, suck and help them to move. It helps them to grip onto things. It helps them to move along the ocean floor. It's super helpful. Here, this, the ampulla, ampullae, right there, that would be like the black suction part of the eyedropper. And right down here, move this. Here's the suction part of the two feet, okay? So you can see them right here. Those are the two feet. And if you watch that echinoderm video from Shape of Life, you can see them actually moving. I don't have a living starfish to show you, so you should watch that video. It's great. I love those videos from Shape of Life. They're so amazing. Okay, so how do they feed? Well, one way um, that they feed is if my hand is a sea star. See? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah! Okay, so then if this right here is... A shell. Sea stars really like to eat clams. So here's a clam. So what happens is sea stars like and then attaches them to the clam and uses two feet and it pulls really, really hard. Okay, because clams are really hard to open because they have those adductor muscles. So it pulls really hard, but it doesn't open it all the way. It opens it enough to shove its stomach inside of the clam. So this clam is open a tiny bit. Okay, so it's open just a little bit here. See, it's open a little bit like this. Okay, then it shoves its stomach, the sea star shoves its stomach inside the clam, partially digests the insides of the clam because that's soft tissue. Then it brings it back into the starfish, sea star, and then it digests it the rest of the way. Isn't that gross? So in that video, it shows you that. It's amazing. Uh, excretions, they have an anus and they have, through their two feet, they can ex excrete the liquid waste. So like the ammonia, that would be the liquid waste. Like I already said, they their respiration through uh, they get their oxygen from the water through their water vascular system and then the circulation also occurs through that and i don't know if you saw on the picture but the water vascular system goes up and down right here this is part of the water vascular system it goes up and down oh let's use blue up and down each slide so each two feet the water can go in through the two feet like that then it can go down this radial canal then it can go to the ring canal 
and it can go down so every arm can do that because they all connect so every arm has all of these things every arm has a digestive gland so like right here this digestive gland looks like this it's only showing you each arm separate so that you know what you're looking at but every arm has these digestive glands okay every arm has gonads so like right here gonads gonads are reproductive organs okay and every arm has this radial canal with the two feet connected to it so um it's important to understand that that every arm has one but all the pictures it shows them in separate because otherwise you won't be able to see all the different parts okay so the two feet, see, these are the little two feet. Don't they look like little um, droppers, medicine droppers? And they, they have like hundreds of them and they use them to help them to walk and then to open up that clam. And then they take in water through, uh, so they get their oxygen from the water through diffusion. Then they circulate it through all of these radial canals and the ring canal through every single arm. Um, they circulate the nutrients that are dissolved from digestion or the oxygen and stuff. All right, the anus is on the top, so that's on the dorsal side. The mouth is on the ventral side. So when that C star, my hand, this would be the ventral side, opened up this clam here, opened it up, then the mouth came out of the ventral side, or sorry, the stomach came out of the mouth, the ventral side, and then it partially digested the food and went back into the mouth where the stomach is at. And then any waste that it produced, solid waste, come out the anus, which is on the top, and liquid waste go out the two feet. So they reproduce. They do have separate sexes. Uh, the testes and the ovaries, those are the gonads that were reproduced that I showed you in the last slide. So you can see them right here. So they have separate sexes. They're going to have external fertilization in the water. You can also um, cut off their arm. As long as you have part, like you could cut this part off right here, that whole thing there, and then it would grow back. You have to have part of the middle in order for it to grow back, but um, they can do that. They can regenerate. Larva have bilateral symmetry, but the adults have radial symmetry. Very good. All right, so these are some of the groups. Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're so pretty. So you have brittle stars, which is over here. You have sea cucumbers. Oh, look at the sand dollars. And these are sea urchins. Um, you have sea lilies and feather stars. You have all sorts of different stuff. Like here's a sea urchin. Sea otters love to eat them. Uh, those are all the different types of echinoderms, and they're very beautiful, and they all have radial symmetry. The sea stars have something called penta radial symmetry. Penta means five. Very good. Pentagon, um, pentagon means five. So that means you can divide it five times. So if you have penta radial symmetry, if you care, that, is it going to work? So you can go one, two, three, four, five. Um, did I do them all? One, two, three, four. Oh, I missed one. I don't know. I don't know. Is there five lines there? So penta radial symmetry. So echinoderm ecology, what happens when there's a rise in the number of echinoderms? So like, for example, if there's too many, there's too many sea urchins, then what they do is they take down the kelp beds because that's where they, um, and if there's not kelp beds, then the fish don't have a place to spawn. And that's like sort of thing. So the the echinoderm ecology really, really, really matters. And this is very important. So we talk about the major threat to coral bleach. Um, to coral is that temperatures, if the temperatures of the water get too high, it's not like you can just add ice to do this. So this is like a huge problem. It causes the coral to the symbionts to leave the coral because it's too high and then coral can't be successful and they bleach. The reason why they call it bleaching is because then they turn white because the algae that live in them end up dying we're leaving. And there's a great video here and an HHMI that we will watch about coral bleaching because it shows really good pictures and videos of the coral and what happens. Because coral has a mutualistic relationship. Coral has to live in shell, like all of the coral reefs and things like that. If you've ever gone snorkeling or um, under deep sea diving or whatever, all the coral reefs are very beautiful and they all live in shallow warm water because that's where they're most successful. And they have a mutualistic relationship. Remember mutualistic Remember what that means? Mutualism is where they both benefit. Both species are benefit. Mutualistic relationship. The coral benefits because it gets oxygen from the algae. Um, the algae benefits because it gets the place to live. And it gets carbon dioxide from the coral. And they both live together. And they actually can't really live successfully. with The coral can't live successfully without it. They end up dying and bleaching. So we will watch that as well. 
All right. Uh, let me know if you have questions.